Well, hello guys. Gracie and I are looking forward to having some reading time with you guys today. Um, hope everyone is still healthy um, and your family is doing well. Um, I know it's getting kind of, this quarantine's getting kind of long. Um, ready for things to kind of get back to normal hopefully soon. Anyway, um, our first book today is called Wombat Stew. One day, on the banks of a billabong, a very clever dingo caught a wombat. A dingo is like a dog. And decided to make wombat stew. Wombat stew. Gooey, brewy, yummy, chewy, wombat stew. Platypus came ambling up the bank. Good day, Dingo, he said, snapping his bill. What is all that water for? Come over here, Gracie. Gracie, come over here. Are you being camera shy today? Are you being camera shy today? Good day, Dingo, he said, snapping his bill. What is all that water for? I'm brewing up a gooey, chewy, stewy with that fat wombat, replied Dingo with a toothy grin. If you ask me, said Platypus, the best thing for gooey stew is mud. Big blobs of billabong mud. Blobs of mud, Dingo laughed. What a good idea. Righto, in they go. So Platypus scooped up big blocks of mud with his tail and tipped them into the billy can. Around the bubbling billy, Dingo danced and sang, Wombat stew, wombat stew, gooey, brewy, yummy, chewy, wombat stew. Waltzing out from the shade of the iron banks came Emu. She arched her graceful neck over the brew. Oh ho, Dingo, she fluttered. What have we here? Gooey, chewy, wombat stew, boasted Dingo. If only it were a bit more chewy, she sighed. But don't worry, a few feathers will set it right. Feathers, Dingo smiled. That would be chewy. right oh, in they go. So in to the gooey brewy, Emu dropped her finest feathers. Look at her, she took all her feathers off. What do you think about that, Gracie? Around and around the, bu the bubbling billy, Dingo danced and sang, Wombat stew, wombat stew, crunchy munchy for my lunchy, wombat stew. Old Blue Tongue the Lizard came sliding off. Came sliding off his sun soaked stone. Sicily Dingo, he hissed. There are no flies in this stew. Can't be wombat stew without crunchy flies in it. And he stuck out his bright blue tongue. There's a lot to be said for flies, agreed Dingo, rubbing his paws together. Right-o, in they go. So Lizard snapped 100 flies from the air with his long tongue and flipped them into the gooey, chewy stew. Around and around and around, the bubbling billy, Dingo danced and sang, Wombat stew, wombat stew, crunchy munchy for my lunchy, wombat stew. Up through the red dust popped Echidina. Wait a bit. Not so fast, he bristled, shaking the red dust from his quills. Now I've been listening to all this advice, and take it from me, for a munchy stew, you need slugs and bugs and creepy crawlies. Here he is. Dingo wagged his tail. 
Why, I should have thought of that. Right o, in they go. So Echidina dug up all sorts of creepy crawlies and dropped them into the gooey, chewy, crunchy stew. The very clever dingo stirred and stirred all the while singing, Wombat stew, wombat stew, hot and spicy, oh so nicey, wombat stew. There he is. Just then, the sleepy-eyed koala climbed down the scri scribbly gum tree. Look here, he yawned. Any bush cook knows you can't make a spicy stew without gum nuts. Leave it to a koala to think of gum nuts. Dingo laughed and licked his whiskers. Right in they go and into the gooey, chewy, crunchy, munchy stew. Koala shook. Lots and lots of gum nuts. Aha, cried Dingo. Now my stew is missing only one thing. What's that? asked the animals. That fat wombat. Wait, stop. Hang on, Dingo. You can't put the wombat into the stew yet. Look at the wombat. Why not? You haven't tasted it. Right o, I'll taste it. And that very clever dingo bent over the billy and took a great big slurp of stew. Arr, gooey! I'm poison, he howled. You've all tricked me. Look at him. He's got his tongue hanging out. And he dashed away deep into the bush, never again to sing. Wombat stew, wombat stew, gooey, brewy, yummy, chewy, wombat stew. Okay, the second book is called Love You Forever. This is one of my favorite books, um, and it was one of my kids' favorites, too. A mother held her new baby and very slowly rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she held him, she sang, I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. The baby grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was two years old. And he ran all around the house. He pulled all the books off the shelves. He pulled all the food out of the refrigerator. And he took his mother's watch and flushed it down the toilet. Sometimes his mother would say, This kid is driving me crazy. Look at him. But at nighttime, when that two-year-old was quiet, she opened the door to his room crawled across the floor and looked up over the side of his bed. And if he was really asleep, she picked him up and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. While she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby will be. The little boy grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was nine years old. And he never wanted to come in for dinner. He never wanted to take a bath. And when Grandma visited, he always said bad words. Sometimes his mother wanted to sell him to the zoo. But at nighttime, when he was asleep, the mother quietly opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor, and looked up over the side of the bed. If he was really asleep, she picked up that nine-year-old boy and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. The boy grew. 
He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was a teenager. He had strange friends and he wore strange clothes and he listened to strange music. Sometimes the mother felt like she was in a zoo. Here he is being a teenager. But at nighttime, when that teenager was asleep, the mother opened the door to his room. She crawled across the floor and looked up over the side of the bed. If he was really asleep, she picked up that great big boy and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. While she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. That teenager grew. He grew and he grew and he grew until he grew until he was a grown-up man. He left home and got a house across town. Where's his house? But sometimes on dark nights, the mother got into her car and she drove across town. If all the lights in her son, son's house were out, she opened his bedroom window, crawled across the floor, and looked up over the side of his bed. If that great big man was really asleep, she picked him up and she rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. Look at her, she's rocking her grown son. Well, that mother, she got older. She got older and older and older. One day, she called up her son and said, You better come see me because I'm very old and sick. So her son came to see her. When he came in the door, she tried to sing the song. She sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. But she couldn't finish because she was too old and sick. The son went to his mother. He picked her up and he rocked her back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he sang this song. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my mommy will be. And here he is rocking her, his mom. When the sun came home that night, he stood for a long time at the top of the stairs. Then he went into the room where his very new baby daughter was sleeping. He picked her up in his arms and very slowly rocked her back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while he rocked her, he sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. There he is, rocking his baby. That's a really sweet story. This book is called I'd Choose You. This is another one of the books that my kids liked when they were growing up. Gracie likes this book. <laughs> Norbert. The little elephant had a very sad look on his face as he slowly walked up the steps to his house. This had been the worst day of his whole life. Here he is coming up the steps. This is Norbert. Mom, it's been an awful day. Nothing's gone right since I left for school this morning, said Norbert. You didn't miss the roller coaster again, did you? His mother asked. For where they lived, all the kids took roller coasters to school instead of buses. No, I got to the roller coaster stop just in time, but everyone else already had someone to sit with, and I had to sit all by myself on the very last row. Here he is on the very last row. He's having to sit all by himself. And then at lunch, all the fifth graders decided they want to sit at the table by the window. Come on, Gracie. Sit by the window. 
and that meant the only place left to sit was with Heidi, the hippo. But Heidi's a nice girl, Norbert's mother said. Mom, she thinks she's my girlfriend. She even tried to put her head on my shoulder. It was so awful. She lost her balance and fell in my mashed potatoes right in front of the fifth graders. That would be pretty embarrassing. Here you go. You want a, you want a treat? Then after school, I went out to play ball. And when they picked teams, there was one kid too many. You, said his mother, quietly, yes, me, nobody likes me, nobody wants to pick me, and as he spoke, a big tear rolled down his trunk. Come over here, Tracy. Come here, look at the story. Norbert, his mother said in her softest, warmest voice, if I could use my arms to hug only one child, Guess which one I'd choose. Come here. That's easy, said the little elephant. You're, you choose Puffy Panda. He's so soft, everyone likes to hug him. And since Puffy is so big, everybody can hug him all at the same time. There's Puffy the Panda. No, Mother Smile, guess again. If I could give you a You're Someone Special medal to only one child, guess which one I'd choose. Mom, you choose Florence the Flamingo. She deserves a medal because she's the only one who can do a triple loop when we all go ice skating. There she is doing her little loop, triple loop. No, said Norbert's mom. Guess again. If I could use my voice to cheer for only one child, guess which one I'd choose. That's easy, too. You choose Ralph the Rhino. Everybody cheers for him because he's so brave. He even jumps off the high diving board. There's Ralph the Rhino jumping off the, the high dive. No, said Mother. Guess again. If I could help just one child realize what an exciting and wonderful future God has for him, a future where he can become anything he wants to be, guess which one I'd choose. Mom, that's a no-brainer. You choose Cassie the Caterpillar because she'll be a beautiful butterfly someday. No, not Cassie the Caterpillar, Mother chuckled. If I could use my arms each day to hug and my voice to cheer, if I could honor one child who has an exciting and wonderful future, and if I could teach him each day that he is God's special gift, especially on those days when he doesn't get picked, guess which one I'd choose every time. I'd choose you. And I'd choose you too, said Father Elephant, who had just come in the door. Daddy, Norbert the Elephant yelled as he ran to hug his father. And we're not the only ones who would choose you, said his father with a smile. Really, asked Norbert. Norbert's giving his dad a hug. Heidi the Hippo is outside with ice cream, and she's waiting for you, said Father. Oh, no, Norbert gasped. There's Heidi the Hippo with the ice cream. <laughs> That's a fun story. That was one of my favorites, too, when my kids were little. Well, that's the end of our reading time today, Miss Gracie. And um, anyway, we'll see you next week, and I hope you are staying healthy. Bye-bye.